All right, so we should talk about how we made the album. Uh, well, I approached you. You did. I was, it by I was very happy to get the approach. No, you sent me an email. I sent you an email. With this idea, and it made me very happy. Well, that's good. It still does. It continues to make me happy. Yeah, and we it. spent a few months um, sort of putting the song list together. That was a, that was a, a yeah, good Yeah, it was tricky. Well, there are a lot of songs to choose from, thankfully. And uh, so We're talking about like that, I mean, even for the show, that smile, when was that written? What year? Oh, gosh, I don't even know. But 76? It was probably somewhere in the 70s. Yeah, it's the oldest one in the show. Okay, and then yeah. Learn How to Say Goodbye is the newest? That was about three or four years old. Okay, so yeah. that's the sort so of... That's, that's the range. It's about a 30-year... Uh, so as you can imagine, we had a lot of, a lot of songs to choose. Yeah, right. From. Uh, uh, but yeah. how did you feel that process was for you? I mean, we just did it by email. We did, but because you're so familiar with my work, yeah. that it wasn't, a, it wasn't really that difficult to decide. And I just deferred to you because you're the one that's going to have to sing them, you know. So <laughs> I can play them all, you know, whatever. We can be here all night. Uh, we can be all night. But um, I'm especially glad that you included some that hadn't been recorded before, yeah. like Learn How to Say Goodbye, Something Spontaneous, uh, Puddle of Love. Yeah, those are the first I, times they've been recorded. I, well, I had recorded Puddle of Love on a very obscure uh, album, but it really hadn't been out there in the world. Until yeah, right. Now. And it's a great song. Fun. It should be out there. Well, thank you. Um, they're, they're all fun. And I love Learn How to Say Goodbye. Uh, that's certainly my favorite song of the last few years. Yeah, right. So I'm glad you were open to including that as well as some favorites of yours and yeah. mine. And you know hopefully what? So, theirs. And someone, said, someone wrote to me recently and asked me, why did we... Uh, tackle things like Better Than I, Grateful, and Taking the Wheel, those three. That, which we, that you'd already recorded. That we'd already recorded. Right. And I thought it was interesting because, you know, we're older now. Well, first of all, I, the first two, Grateful or Grateful and Taking the Wheel, right. I recorded without you here in That's Australia. Um, so no one's ever heard us on a recording do those songs. Yeah, I, and I also thought that That's passing special. of time of, of artists and, and doing that sort of thing is, you know, where we stand now that we're older and I've got a kid and family and, yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff adds to what you sing. I agree. Same with agree. Better Than I. Absolutely. And I'm playing differently. I mean, yes. You, you never mature, play the same, but you never play the same thing twice. And I never play the same thing twice. And that is difficult. Is that? Well, is that that's hard to catch up no, with? No, for me, playing the same thing twice would be difficult. Yeah. Because it's, I feel like music, and especially with you, uh, or actually accompanying any singer to a certain extent. No, no, keep with me. But especially with you, yeah, is a, 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 a um, in the moment experience and I don't want to pin it down I want to respond to if there's an audience to what they're doing to whatever mood you're in whatever tempo you're setting if you want to take a breath in a different place I just want to be tuned in and I think uh, I think audiences notice that and it feels there's a kind of immediacy to that uh, which we have the freedom to do and I love that which I feel that with the, the CD as to what people are about to see live you know, they, if there is a lot more of that. So that if they've got the CD and they've listened to that, mm. when we're doing it live, especially because this is what, our 16th, 15th, 16th show, right. you know, things have changed it's and evolved. evolved. The songs have evolved since yeah. we recorded them. Yeah. I won't say they're better, but they've evolved. No, but they have evolved. And, there's, and there is a different energy when you're performing, when there's an audience there. Yeah. They're the third, the third party yeah. in this collaboration. So it does shift things uh, in a fascinating way. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to... Uh, to see what we've come up with. We've come up with a lot. <laughs> oh. I mean, we've done all of this, if people don't know. So we, we communicated a couple of months back. So it's been about right. five or six months right. before you came here, I right. think, that we communicated to the site. And then we're gonna, you're going to fly in, you're going to get over your jet lag, wow. and I'll drag you to a studio. We're going to do the album in two days, and then we're going to tour. Hello. And about a third of the songs, let's not forget, were in different keys than I've ever played them. Oh. And since I don't read, I couldn't just transpose it on paper and then read it. I had to do it all by ear. And it was, it was scary. I had some cheat sheets that have little chords when, when uh, we would get to a new section because there's always the possibility that muscle memory is going to take me into the old key. Well, that would change. be a disaster. That would not be good. Yeah, no, so, we don't want that at uh, all. So it's been a little musically stressful at the beginning for me. Well, me too. Uh, I had to, I mean, some of the songs that people are going to see on this, you know, that we didn't record for the CD, like, I stayed. Yeah. I can't, I mean, I can't tell everybody how long we yeah, spent on that song. We did. Just to get that, I mean, because that rhythm, uh, well, what is that rhythm a lot, anyway? It's a, a lot of it is in 7-8. Which seven, is a complicated eight. rhythm to do. And especially since, I mean, if it's a steady 7-8, that's one thing. But it's 7-8, 7-8, 7-8, 7-8, 7-8, 7-8, 7-8, 7-8, 7-8, 7-8, 7-8, 7-8, 7-8, 7-8, 
some of the time, and then, <laughs> but not always. Yeah. Because that would be too boring. Yeah. And not to mention that there are a billion words, yeah. which I don't know how you remember them. It's remarkable. Yeah. And also, I don't read music. So that's handy that I don't read as yeah, well. Yeah, well, that's So great. we can just talk it's in... the blind leading the, <laughs> the blind. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't help sometimes. Oh, well. But, the, but we had to learn, it took a while to learn all the songs and to get my voice into singing in, in well, that sort of... that's what I remember is uh, when I first arrived and I went to that uh, benefit that you did. Yeah. And you, where you were singing with your father yeah. in a radically different voice than you, you use on this CD. Lungs and, were I mean, full. like lungs of steel. Yeah. And I was like, that's so not going to work. Is that how he sings now? And it's one of the ways you sing now. Sure. But then when we started rehearsing, I remember exactly, we were doing It Feels Like Home. And all of a sudden, you settled into this different voice that I thought, oh, he's got it. Yeah. yeah, I think for me, it was about finding our way into the song and into the what it was going to be. I mean, we'd already set up pretty much before you got here what songs we were going to record. Yeah. And even what order, I yeah. think. We, we were had, pretty close. We were pretty close with the order, too. So it was like, how, and I, so I knew how I wanted the CD to sound sonically, mm -hmm. right. but it was getting my voice into that as well, which was which you know, is a different. Different, I think, certainly a different way that you've sung than you have recently. Yeah. And even because of your maturity, uh, a different way than you've ever sung. Even when we used to do these songs, I, j I just feel like... Oh, no, I definitely feel like when we were doing this stuff in the 90s, like, If I Ever Say I'm Over You, yeah. you know, I did that. It was almost like a 90s power ballad back then. You didn't... Well, I th I, you just didn't have the subtlety and... Oh, thank you I so much. Think that you do now. No, I mean, I think you've grown... I didn't have the subtlety. You That's didn't. what he said on camera. I meant it. Well, but thank you it for wrapping that in. Oh, that compliment. You That's didn't have it back then. No. And now you do. So you've grown. I was younger. Yeah. You were younger. Let's talk about... Um, we were both younger. You know, you have... If there's a song for, you know, the super fans out there of yours, which there are a lot, um, you know, Grateful is something that's been a certain way for a long time. And we, right. we definitely wanted to come at it from a different level and sort of pull it apart a bit. A little bit. And sort of, sort of dissect it. It's kind of uh, deconstructed more as we've been performing it. Yeah, even than more. it was Now you've got like an intro and... And the intro changes at every <laughs> <laughs> performance. I never know what's going to happen and I just hope it's... Uh, okay, so far I've, we've been lucky. I think this one that uh, they can see is really Yeah, good. the one on the DVD, I think, turned That's your out. best one. Uh, it, was, it was a nice one. Mm. It was very sweet, yeah. But the process yeah. of actually breaking that down, I mean, was that... Uh, how, how, did, how did you feel about that? I was open to it. I'm fine. You're fine with it? Yeah, this whole project has been a very good opportunity for me, a learning opportunity for me, to let go of control because I didn't have control. And I could either have been tearing my hair out saying, we're going to record in two days, are you crazy? I don't get to like nitpick and you know do every little uh, detail. Uh, okay. And I, I have learned that there is something wonderful to be gained when you're working with somebody terrific. There's something wonderful to be gained from that kind of spontaneity. I mean, we often would do more than one take in, in the studio. Yeah. And 95% of the time, we went back to take one. Yeah, that's right. Because it just felt uh, the easiest, and we weren't overthinking it. So that's, that's been the big lesson for me, is to, to, that sometimes not overthinking things can be, a good, can be good. Yeah, I think so, too. Well, let's talk, uh, let's talk about the people that you've, you've you know, worked with. You, oh my you're, you're ostensibly, though, a solo you know, writer and well, performer. Well, I thought of myself as a solo writer and performer when I started writing, and I didn't really, uh, you know, I was thinking singer song, confessional singer songwriter, a la mm. Joni Mitchell or, uh, you know, uh, Billy Joel. Um, and then other people started to want to sing my songs, which was flattering, but because at that time the technology to get them on paper didn't exist, I wasn't thrilled with people just learning them off of, especially pianists, accompanists learning them, because they're very specific uh, and complex piano parts. Um, and, but then other people wanted to do them, and luckily the technology has evolved 
where I can play them into a computer and then they, they come out as written genius. Because now, I mean, you, you, know, know, we, you did that album so, a few years ago where, you know, where I was on it and Liza was oh, on well, it. Well, Grateful, yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Art Garfunkel. That was the first sort of official CD that I, that I released. I released a couple of homemade things earlier than that. But, uh, which one of those people, you know, um, not myself, but like which one of those people that David Campbell were, was by far my favorite. By far the best. Oh my no, gosh. But like, uh, no. Which one of the ones were A, you were most intimidated by, and B, you were most surprised by? Hmm. Intimidated? Well, by the ones that, uh, that were, my, were icons of mine when I was you know, growing up, like Art Garfunkel yeah. and Judy Collins. Yeah. I'd say they, I was, and Art had become a friend, so he was a little less intimidating. Judy, I barely knew. And actually, I remember when she was recording Sweet Dreams, it's, I think, the only time this has ever happened to me in a studio. I forgot that I was playing piano. I was just watching Judy Collins in the vocal booth singing my song, and I was so dazzled by that. That and that's the take we used, but it was like I was out of my body. I don't even know what I was playing. It was amazing, so that was pretty impressive. Uh, but all of those people, I mean, Liza Minnelli, are you kidding me? I know. And they became friends when I moved to New York to very varying degrees. Uh, Kristen Chenoweth stepped in at the last moment. Was such a pro, the nicest person ever. She does this moment on this that moment. Gorgeous. She learned version. the song and came into the studio and nailed it in one take and. Uh, That's great. why she's a star. So that was a great, that whole album was an extraordinary experience. Uh, and a, a life changing experience. Yeah. Um, you know, after that, you know, you talk about, we talk about the DreamWorks thing in the show, mm -hmm. and we also talk about, a bit about the, the Catered Affair thing. Yeah. But those things are really monumental, you know, I would say, yeah. in your life. Oh you know, gosh, those yeah. two massive things that sort of literally will change the way you're doing it. Looking back mm. on them now, mm. Uh, and I know that in the show we, you joke openly about like, oh no, I don't want to do it. And it sounds horrible. But looking back on them now with a bit of distance, and uh, you know, how do you feel about those two projects? Um, I'm enormously proud of both of them. I'm proud that I made it through uh, in peace, in, in in one piece. I'm proud that I, you know, one thing if you, if you think about it, that that I had not learned in writing in isolation for so many years was how to collaborate. Um, it and, feels to me like this is you know, a, a theme of this, and you were just mentioning it before with, yeah, with you and I. Yeah. It's something that's dragging you it, into more collaboration. It, is, it seems to be. And I'm learning, like any relationship, I'm learning how to do it without losing myself. Mm -hmm. I'm learning how to do it uh, and still set some boundaries and be assertive and, and choose my, my, my battles and, and say, absolutely not, I really feel strongly about this. And in other instances, to let it go, and certainly to be open when somebody else has a better idea, and say, you know what, let's do it your way. That's yeah. you know, that's a lot better. So, yes, I'm growing finally <laughs> in maturity. Look, we'll do this again next week at four. Uh, uh, not me again. <laughs> it's like a therapy session. Fun. It is. Yeah. I know. I know. Should I be lying down? <laughs> we only had two days at three. I wanted to record this. <clears throat> um, I mean, there was a lot of pressure to get it right. Yeah. When yeah. you first told me we were going to record in two days, and not even two full days, because you had your morning show to do before you, we got to the studio. That's so bad. I was like, what? Are you crazy? But again, that's where the letting go process sure. uh, began for me. Uh, I just suspended disbelief and just thought, we'll do, we'll do what we can well, do. My theory was but what that, great people at that studio. Oh, yeah, yeah, fantastic. But my that. theory with that was is that, you know, a lot of my favorite albums of that sort of ilk, you know, all the jazz albums of that stage as well, like if you think of Tony Bennett and Bill Evans and stuff, they would have done it in an afternoon, you know, so I figured yeah. that if we give ourselves an extra day, just in case, it was still a <laughs> massive I would not day. have believed it possible. I don't know if I'd do it again. Yeah. If, uh, I mean, well, and we managed to keep pretty cool. I didn't yeah. think we were stressed so we out found about it. We got it. our rhythm going. <clears throat> but um, it was intense, that's definitely true. And then the fact that it was mastered on the third day and we had it in our hands a week later. A week later, yeah. Insane. I thought we set a record, but we called Guinness. We didn't. Ah, damn. I know. We missed it by you know, maybe a day. Oh, well. See if we'd recorded it in one day. Yeah. Oh, well. I know. We're such wimps. But it was great, uh, too, that even before you got to the studio, I could be there 
and for instance, the second morning, we started getting a sound yeah, in terms that's of right. on the things that we'd recorded. The engineer and I started working on a sound for your voice, which you know, obviously you had to approve and you tweaked it. But at least we were, you know, I think we utilized the time very, very well. I, th I think the that little bit of time that we had. Oh, the when you've collaborated yeah. with other people, and I'm not drawing comparisons for me to like Harvey Feinstein and people like that, but. Is it easier collaborating with someone like me where we ha already have a short, yeah. you know, conversation, yeah. you know? Yeah. But also there's the, a musical, we, we, I don't think we ever really disagreed about anything. No. There's just, an, we see things musically and hear things musically in the same, in a very similar way, which is what I think contributes to the musical, the performance compatibility yeah. as well, because we just, we, we hear things similarly and that, that went a long way. Because, I mean, imagine if we'd been at each other's throats and, <laughs> no, do this, use this thing. Yeah, it's Fleetwood, Max, always, it's Fleetwood Max Rumors we version always, of, of this album. We always agreed. Yeah. It was like, you know what, that's better. I feel, I feel that live, though, too. I feel that the friendship and the fact that I feel, I, I mean, I, I say it live, but I, I do mean it. I feel like I intrinsically or inherently get yeah. the meter of yeah. your music, like how it, how it sits uh, and, and how you play it and, yeah. you know, how your phrasing wants to be and all that stuff. I feel like I've, yeah. it's been a part of my... Or, you know, audio live for so long yeah. that I feel like I know it. And yeah. I, 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 I sense that on stage. I, absolutely. I say, uh, and I, I will say it again, it's like when you see a flock of birds and they're flying along and they all turn at the same time and you think, how do they know? How do they know? That's what it feels like, making yeah. music with you. We just know. It's, it is a kind of telepathy that I, I, that I don't, certainly don't have with, uh, with very many people. Yeah, it's a musical telepathy.